Time for Micromax in UKC. The numbers may be low, but the quality is always high. Rory Armstrong and Zane Quaker from James Robertson, Dan Minto, Jack Freeman and Jacob Rum. Six drivers, GYG, game on. Up to the first corner. And there is already a change as Armstrong has dropped into second position and he's trying to stop Roberts from coming through on the inside line. Really trying, really trying. Did you see the wheel smoke? as they rub close together on the inside line there. You can't get much closer than that as up the inside. Oh, we've gone over the top. Oh dear, oh dear. That was Jacob Rum just getting a little bit too close to Jack Freeman. Let's watch it from the outside camera. He has a look on the inside. The thing is Dan Minto's already made the overtake and he feels there's enough space to get through as well. Jack Freeman disagrees. Jacob Rump's already committed. What a shame. Well, that's a bit like the Usakovs incident earlier. That's slightly worse there for the uh, 93 of Jack Freeman. He's, uh, well, he may get away with, he may not get a mechanical flag there because the um, the Nassau panel is just sitting on the cart. That's Rory Armstrong, championship leader, picked out now down in third place. Yeah, it's not detached. It's just kind of hanging off the bracket, isn't it? So it should be all right, to be fair. On the inside, there's the move from Armstrong back into second position. So Quaker's already started to disappear out front, but if Rory Armstrong has got anything to say about it, he is going to be charging forward. And you can see he's already had a couple of moments over the course of this very competitive weekend because his uh, front fairing is a different color to everybody else's. He may have needed a spare. Yeah, he may have changed that at some point after an earlier heat or pre-final that we've not seen. But uh, it's Quaker out front again with a reasonably comfortable gap at this stage. After the first lap, it was 0.7. It's 0.6 now, so he's not quite having it all his own way this time. No, indeed. It's looking a little murky out there, actually, as well. It looks as though the sun has gone in behind the clouds. Now, why is that particularly significant? Well, here, the track temperature can drop significantly it when can. the sunshine is behind the clouds. And that can actually really change the way that the cart feels for the driver, because as the air temperature drops, the track temperature drops. And it drops really quickly here as well. If you're only looking at 14, 15 degrees Celsius air temperature, you're pushing the 20s in track temperature. And if the cart is set up for a little bit warmer than that, especially when it comes to tire pressures, you'll suddenly find that the cart doesn't have the same balance from the end of the race from the start. So yeah. it's a big game changer. The two things that change significantly, tire pressures can have a significant effect and jetting in the carburetor can have a significant effect if the, if the temperature around the track drops significantly, the air temperature that is. It can, uh, it can make a difference if you've not got the jetting absolutely spot on. It can make a, a, a difference there. And look at this. Yeah, that is not a big gap from St. Quaker anymore, isn't it? Armstrong has just reeled him in. Now, this is going to be interesting. This is, again, all going to be about defensive tactics. We saw from senior Rotax earlier how Lewis Gilbert really had to work hard and then eventually couldn't quite keep Kai Hunter behind him. Now, this is all going to be about where Quaker places the cart to keep Armstrong at bay. Now, at the moment, he doesn't know he's there. He's not stuck his nose in. He's not looked, so he doesn't know he's right behind him. He'll be hoping he's got a 15, 20 meter gap. Will he have a look here? He doesn't at the moment, so he doesn't know Armstrong's there. But as soon as Armstrong sticks his nose up the inside, then Quaker is going to know, oh, hold on a minute, I'm under pressure here. Yeah, Armstrong's got to do this move basically before Quaker even knows he's there. Now he knows now he's he there. Knows. Oh, dear. Now Zane Quaker is going to be in major defense mode. It is time to channel your Gary Neville instincts. You've got to be as ultra defensive as you can now, mate, because Rory Armstrong is the kind of driver who, if you give him an inch, he's going to take a country mile. So there you go into the first part. Devil's elbow taking a narrow line in there. He knows that's a potential overtaking opportunity. Watch him the, in the, final, final turn. the final turn is, but it's difficult to get up the inside there because it's got such a high curb. If you take too much of that curb, it can spit you out completely. Here we go. Watch him. He's going to be absolutely hugging the inside apex up to Spoon. This is the ultimate overtaking move for any driver, and it's the most obvious one. Watch him on the inside. Park it, park it, park it. Lovely. No problem there for Zane Quaker. Holds the line. It's a bit early to be doing that, and he's narrow again down now. The <laughs> interesting thing about the rules and regs in Europe, I think, Jake, it's the same as it is in the UK. There is no ne necessarily no rule about 
you can drive whatever line you want if As you're out front. Leader, yeah. If it's in the United States, I believe they have rules which stop people driving the defensive line before something like the penultimate lap. We, we've done that. We've seen that here in the British Championships some years ago when Alan Bryant, the clerk of the course at Shennington, said if you drive an inside line, a defensive line from lap two onwards, you will get a warning flag. Second lap round, you'll get a black flag. And now... For that to happen, the clerk of the course has got to tell the drivers, if you just drive a defensive line, as Zane Quaker is here now, from lap two, three, four, five, before we get to the end of the race, and now what's happening, <laughs> James Roberts is now involved. And he's getting very he's, hungry. Quaker is slow, slower than Armstrong, and that's allowing James Roberts to get closer. Unless the clerk of the course has given them instructions, you can't do that. It's a bit difficult for him to start giving out warning Here flags. Here comes the move from Roberts. He's getting very hungry now, trying to make his way forward. Now that he can see that Quaker and Armstrong are basically at a stalemate at this point, because Armstrong can't quite get the move on the inside of Quaker. He's got to hope that Quaker is so defensive on the inside, so comfortable on that inside line in the braking that he can try and get him around the outside somewhere because that's the only way he's going to be able to make the move as, the, as things currently stand. See, the difficulty now, as we've seen in this turn, if he went wide, obviously he's given Roberts a chance down the inside. I'm yep. talking about Armstrong in second place. Yep. Now here he can go around the outside, but he's on the outside. He just gets shoved wide because Zane Quaker's got the inside line. And the same in the spoon, up in the spoon, if you go wide and you try and get him on the switchback on the exit, of course, as we've already seen with Usakovs and others, you go side by side, but then you're on the outside again for the left-hander going down the hill and you can end up having a collision, which is what we saw with Usakovs earlier on. Yeah, because on the outside line, you've basically got to turn acute right to get back onto the racing line again. So that is always going to cause problems. Quaker, Armstrong, Roberts charging up the hill to the spoon. Can Quaker hold this off? Because you've got to remember that this is such a difficult overtaking move if you're holding that inside line. Armstrong knows it. Protects again, Quaker. I mean, yes, you've got a little bit more room to play with with Micromax because the carts are narrower and shorter. So you've got more racetrack to play with, but there's more room for error as Roberts nearly gets the move there on Armstrong just because Armstrong is placing his cart to try and get a switchback maneuver on Quaker. And it's difficult to be offensive and defensive in the same moment. This is the closest battle we've had with three drivers for the lead since uh, the first round at Wilton Mill earlier in the season That's on Car Academy when it was uh, Hayward and Quaker. Hayward led into the last lap, didn't defend and allowed Quaker up the inside. Quaker took the win. But we've not seen three drivers out front battling as, as close as we, we've got here all season. Fairly unfortunate that Freeman and Rump had their moment on the first lap because they would be right there with Minto in fourth position, edging towards these three as well. Because we had that little bit of a squabble on the opening lap, Freeman's obviously got damage and had to try and recover. Jacob Rump would have been able to work with Freeman and Minto, and this could have been a six-cart squabble. Yeah, those three drivers not seeing much of them, obviously, because they are pretty much just running around on their own. Yeah, They're not M in any Minto's, battles. You've got to give Dan Minto credit. He's trying to stay as close to these three as he possibly can, but he's in no man's land. He had that little bit of a deficit to the top three as they came down the hill on the first lap. There is uh, Jacob Rump trying to recover. Not easy when you've been basically up in the air, because he was up in the air. Yeah, in that absolutely. moment, you know, he had two wheels at least, possibly three off the deck. It was uh, Jack Freeman that came off worse in that incident. Jacob uh, carried on. Jack pretty much came to a stop, but as you can see from the timing, he's caught Jacob and passed him. Well, yeah, and you've got to remember that going airborne in the middle of a race, that can really unsettle you as a driver. It's uh, a big yeah, psychological it can, moment. It can damage the car. We don't know if there's any damage on the car. It can exactly. certainly change uh, the steering geometry as a minimum, yeah. that sort of incident, no doubt about it. So uh, we obviously have to give the benefit of the doubt to the two drivers there. But for Dan Minto, he's just got to ru run his race and hope that these three have a moment because once you're on your own, even with a deficit of three or four cart lengths, it's so difficult to gain that back if you don't have anybody to work with, especially on this long straight. These three are working together on the toe, as it were, so they can stretch away. But Minto is kind of on his own in fourth position. It's a little bit frustrating for him, but his lap times suggest that Minto is still doing a very good job there in P4, and Quaker still absolutely nailing that inside line. He is not prepared to budge. Yeah, old school days, James. James Bean, particularly, I can think of a few others, including my son, would have nudged Zane Quaker out of <laughs> the way by now. But, of course, with the front fairings no, like no, they no. are, 
you can't do that these days. I mean, people would argue he's driving an inside line from lap four onwards. He deserves to be nudged out of the way. And as, as I say, back in the day, that's exactly what oh, would happen. He's been a bit defensive there in turn one, though. He was a little bit too defensive. He ran wide and he was lucky, actually. He was very fortunate to get across the circuit in time before Armstrong could commit to the inside line. He just didn't quite get the traction into the straight that he needed to get one over on Quaker. Armstrong unfortunate there because that could have been the moment of opportunity to get past Quaker in pure momentum. Yeah, James Bean would certainly have nudged him out of the way by now. I can think <laughs> of another driver, Daryl McDonald, who would have just fired him off, to be honest, and taken the penalty. He probably would have done. <laughs> yeah, he probably would Darryl have Daryl would have been so frustrated by now. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to fire you off. There's going to be an interesting school of thought from people watching this, actually, because the old school hands will be, well, no, you can't just block every single place you go. You've actually got to race. And to be fair, if Quaker were to lose ground to Armstrong, he could essentially return the favor. He could hug in behind Armstrong and make the same move back again. But this is so protective. I mean, this is the this is the truly train in Kartik, isn't it? This is yeah. Vitaly Petrov in Abu Dhabi all over again. Yeah, you see, he's defending again down the inside, down the hill. It's almost, I would say almost impossible. It's not impossible. You can do it, but he's almost got to drive defensively and then outbreak himself to give them a chance and now you've got Roberts all over the back of Armstrong Armstrong knows Roberts is there obviously he's seen his front nose cone he knows he's right behind he's hoping he's going to get a chance to go down the inside and Roberts is going to shove him through and go with him that was exactly what I was going to say if I were Armstrong I'd be gesturing to James Roberts at this point come on the two of us we should get him together we should team up here we should go for Quaker because if we can team up and join forces we can both both have him, and that way it's left to us to battle out for the victory. But he just can't quite get close enough, Roberts, unless Armstrong has lost momentum. And that's the difficulty. Roberts needs to tag in here as Quaker blocks. Now, look, he needs to be bolted to the back bumper of Rory Armstrong's cart. He needs to guide him through. And if they get the exit right, but he's going to go for the move himself. He's been frustrated. No, you've taken too long. I'm going to go for it myself now. And that is a fantastic move by James Roberts, by the way. No doubt about it. He is an absolute top quality driver in this class, James Roberts and uh, Rory Armstrong, unfortunately now, as you say, with a lap to go, I think it's definitely left too late. Yeah, that's why Roberts made the move, because essentially once they go onto the penultimate lap, he will have seen the timing, Ganshi. He will have seen how much time there was left to run. Armstrong now back on the inside of Roberts, but Roberts knowing how much time was left. Oh, Armstrong has a go, but it's not going to happen. And I think that settled it. I think Roberts is going to have second. Armstrong's going to have third. Well, definitely Zane Quaker has won the race now. That one move there has made sure that uh, this is the way it's going to finish if you look at the gap. You know exactly why Roberts did that. Roberts did that because he had to. Once you go into the penultimate lap, you've just got to focus on yourself. You've got yeah, to get exactly. into second. You can't just sit there. You've got to look after number one, which is exactly what Roberts did. And he's going to defend in the final turn to keep Armstrong back. But Quaker's taken the victory and a run wide for Roberts. Oh, my goodness. Wow. After all of that, Armstrong gets him in the final bend regardless. What a shame for James Roberts. Quaker gets the win. Armstrong second. Roberts just drifts wide in the final bend. Dan Minto is fourth from Freeman and Ruff. But Roberts will be so frustrated after that race. Well, how about that? Zane Quecker was fourth place in the championship coming into the weekend. And with that dominant victory there, that would have improved his places somewhat. Let's take a look and see what he had to say when we caught up with him at the podium. Zane, that has to be the Micromax race of the season. Fantastic battle. But you managed to stay out front despite all the pressure. Did you feel the pressure during the race? Definitely. And who do you want to thank for your weekend this weekend? Because it's been a great result for you. I'd like to thank Jake Resty. Uh, my mum, my dad, Craig Rusty, and that's it. OK, well, well done. Thank you. The championship points are switched just like that. Zane Quaker is tied for the lead now with Rory Armstrong. This is based on the worst scores being dropped. James Roberts there in third place. It's basically between the three moving forward. Catch up with all of the other classes featured at round four of the Ultimate Karting Championship here at Glanigors Park. Search for the playlist UKC Round 4 GYG 2021 and all of the finals will be there.